So where are we, Laura? have written your book anywhere else? A lot of people I needed to uh, meet and have uh, helped me along with my journey as it unfolded were here in Boulder, in Boulder area. So, nope, I think this is exactly where I needed to be. I like this book. What do you want people to gather from your book? How many hours you got? <laughs> you got to be able to answer these questions. I know. Um, work on a sound bite. Let's work on one right now. I want people to get that there's something much deeper within them, every person, that is connected uh, to their soul, or whatever words you want to call it. And I believe that music, whatever music resonates with you, and help you access that um, in a very profound way. And Do you think we all have to be mystics to put two and two together when it comes to how music helps us become more self-aware? No, I don't. I, I, and well, let's put it this way. We're all mystics, whether we know it or not, whether we tap into the part of us that connects with our intuition, um, or if we remain far more logical, that's up to each of us. But we all have the ability to be intuitive. And, and you don't have to be um, the stereotypical uh, ohm, ohm kind of uh, person or aesthetic that goes off into the mountains to be able to connect with the music and see the deep messages that it's giving you. One of the things that I found was really fascinating um, along my journey was that synchronicity, uh, I kind of call it the psychic bricks message, uh, a, a message is coming from, from the universe so that you know that you're being, this communication with you and, um, and your soul or your spirit or essence or whatever you, what you want to call it. Um, and synchronicities are a hell of a lot of fun. And if you use them with, um, you start to pay attention to them, that's when uh, miracles can unfold. It's really cool. Do you want an example? Yes. Uh, let's see. Throughout, throughout my journey, I kept getting, um, I kept finding synchronicities where I would either have a flash of an insight about something, and I wasn't sure what it was able to do. Usually what would happen would be at the concert with the band that I followed. Something would happen near or around the concert. So, let's see. Um, sometimes I think people think synchronicities are almost like premonitions. But I think we tend to access this vast, vast um, data bank of information. And when we're open, you don't necessarily know that it's like something that's going to happen. It's just like an insight or a thought that comes your way. So, for instance, on the way to a concert in, um, when I was in California, I was traveling with some other fans. We were all in our own cars. And we were heading towards the next, uh, the next concert of the band that I was following. And on the way there, I, I started thinking about this guy from college that I saw. His name was, his name was James Mapes, and he was a hypnotist. And he hypnotized the entire audience. And, and it was one of the um, really powerful moments in my life where I started to look at the, my own unconscious in a different way. And I thought, wow, this guy is really cool. And I knew some people who ended up on stage, and he did a typical show where you know people uh, are hypnotized and they're talking to other people. And I thought that was really fascinating. And the year following that, he came back and, and um, he said he wanted to teach people how to do this. So I took uh, his one little you know three-hour class with some other students. And, that was really fascinating, and I think that was one of the major catalysts for me to be able to pursue, when I was older, more um, uh, more of this fascinating thread that our unconscious uh, or the subconscious is really influencing our, our, our present life 
uh, in enormous ways besides dreams. And, and that's one way that the subconscious comes through. So anyway, on the way to this concert, I started to think about this guy. I hadn't thought of him in a really long time, but I was writing the book and was leaving all these little breadcrumbs were you know, teasing me along the way. And I thought, wow, you know, that's pretty cool. You know, I haven't thought about this guy. And, you know, maybe he really was a big spark for me. So I get to the concert that day to find the um, warm-up band is a, is a hypnotist. And he did exactly the same kind of, of, of stage performance that James Mapes did. And I was like, whoa, what the heck does that mean? Now, why did that happen on my way to this concert? I had no idea who the warm-up band was going to be. I thought it would just be a, you know, a, a band of, of some local band. And I had no idea that this would, this would occur. And for me, it, it was, again, it's a message that we're, we're all connected to something much, much deeper if we pay attention. And so I asked myself, what does this mean? And I, and I think it really meant that there was um, that being guided constantly um, by this higher wisdom within myself. I call it the soul. Call it whatever you want. But, but that was one of those moments where I remember <laughs> sitting in the audience going, wow, this is just way too cool. Plus, it was hilarious. I mean, the guy was, I mean, they had some help, really funny stuff. And so everybody else was looking at it on the surface. It was, oh, ha, ha, isn't that funny? People are talking to their, they would take off their shoes every time he touched his forehead. Um, people on stage would talk, take off their shoe and start talking to their shoe like it was a phone. Um, and <laughs> but you had a more intimate connection to it. I had a it. much more intimate and connection. And it's not often that a hypnotist opens for a rock band. I've never seen it that happen makes it before more acute. or since then. Exactly. Yeah. And, and that's why the profound moments like that uh, on, on this journey were always asking me, directing me, see, you know, go within more. Don't look just on the surface that something is happening. Ask why. What is the deeper message that you need to understand um, as these things unfold? And the more I paid attention to the synchronicities, the more I paid attention to the little promptings that I got inside, like the little voice that said, go this way, or take a look in that book, or why don't you go um, call this person that you haven't called in a while, or send them an email. And and usually something amazing would happen. The more I did that, the more they unfolded. It was like it was almost like a snowball. The the day I realized that this was really part of my um, path was to write about synchronicities, um, law of attraction, um, these deeper what people might call mystical uh, elements of of reality. Some people don't think it's real. But I began to see this is about everyday life. This is not about something that you want to, um, that's only reserved for, you know, people hundreds of years ago or people from Buddhism or Hinduism. Like, this is something that's really practical. And I think that's what part of my message is that comes across in the book is that you can be just a savage person having a really mind blowing, um, amazing journey with, uh, and being led by a rock band. No use. <laughs> you, you think that the fact that this is written as a novel, though it's based on your own fact and your own interpretations, mm-hmm. you think that anyone who has had a career uh, passion for a certain individual band or is just a lover of music who identifies specifically with one specific group, lyrically, musically, metaphorically, yeah. that they can plug that group into your story mm-hmm. and be just as educated mm-hmm. by your tail. Yes, right. absolutely. It doesn't, mm-hmm. it's a universal journey. Um, mm-hmm. What I've gone on, and I really do feel like there were moments when I was writing and, and, and exploring and, and with it going to concerts that I, I really began to feel like there's, you know, there's the saying that we're all one. And, and when you think about that, you know, we see ourselves as individual bodies and you say, well, I like this rock band and that person likes that band and they don't seem to have anything in common. But it really doesn't matter because Music is the universal language, so uh, and it and it speaks to us on many many levels. Music bypasses the linear logical part of our brain and goes into the right hemisphere and really starts to trigger, I think, some some latent um, aspects uh, of our consciousness. And I mean, music has been a part of, of civilization since the dawn of time. Whether they were just having uh, uh, stones together, there's been rhythm. Rhythm is the essence of life. It's the of, of the universe. So, so I think anybody who's connected with music, whether it's rock music, country, jazz, hip hop, whatever it is that you know floats your boat, it 
there's, and especially if there's one particular musician or a group or, or band that you followed, and, and one of the criteria that I thought was important that you, you, the band has spoken to you for a long period of time. A lot of us go through phases, and you know, one, one band might speak to you while you're going through a difficult period of your life, and, and then you move on, and, and, and that's fine. But if there's been a band that needs to be continually there for you, I mean, for me, I, it started when I was 15 years old, so it's been 30 years. Um, if that if that that longevity and you're still um, feeling that there's, there's a connection to their music that it speaks to you in a way that nothing else does, then yeah, I think I, I think it's for anybody. Um, anybody can read my book who has a connection with any kind of music and hopes to see a part of themselves um, in my journey. This is Lon Friend, author of Life on Planet Rock, getting high <laughs> in the Rockies. Under the evergreens, as Billy Joel once put, with Laura Faith, keeping the faith here in a rock and roll.